be like a rock star or whatever Mm -hmm. uh so like you know like my mom has like a crayon drawing i did of like a dude with a mohawk and like a fucking like a gibson explorer (laughs) my name's adam and this is all about you and your journey in music yeah sick (laughs) cool cool i just checked out your new song and what just came out today right friends yeah it came out at midnight last night i love it man i just listened to it a couple times thank you thank you i had fun making it for sure (laughs) cool cool yeah we'll get into that um Tell me, first off, where were you born and raised? I was born in Columbia, Missouri, and I was raised about 15 minutes south of there in a very small town called Ashland, Missouri. Ashland, Missouri. What was it like growing up there? Um, safe. Um, I That's like good, a good, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I had like a very, like, you know, very privileged uh, middle class upbringing, for sure. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better uh, childhood and shit, honestly, like, uh, you know, I was just into like skateboarding and punk rock and rap music and, and all of that shit. So, uh, that's cool. yeah, it was dope. Was it, I, I'm from San Diego. I was big in this. That's how I got into music skateboarding and, you know, the watching the videos and, you know, toy yeah. machine videos and misfits and made and all that stuff. But, yeah. um, was skateboard coming from a small town like that was skateboarding a big thing there? Uh, no, not necessarily. It was like, uh, no, everyone there is very like conservative, a uh, lot of like redneck types and that kind of thing, but also not. There's a lot of just like, you know, middle class people there. But no, the the skateboarders were few and far between and we stuck together for sure. Sure. Was yeah. it like, were there a lot of spots to go to? Like, I, I can imagine like being in a small town, like if you're like waxing up some re- like some planner in somebody's front yard, yeah. they're going to come out and like have your ass, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, that was, very, that was very much the case. We had like a, a church though with a big parking lot that would was like super cool with letting oh, us. That's rad. That's yeah, really rad to have. Yeah, that's where we would like link up and stuff. That's cool. That's cool. So I did see your dad's a musician, correct? Yes. Yeah, my whole family are musicians. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Like, how is that how you kind of got into music? Yeah, definitely. Like, as long as I can remember, I wanted to uh be like a rock star or whatever uh so like you know like my mom has like a crayon drawing i did of like a dude with a mohawk and like a fucking like a gibson explorer (laughs) and and like like, so that's really all i've ever uh like as long as i've can remember i've wanted to like be on stage play music you know that kind of thing for sure um so yeah I got into my, I was raised in like a very like a uh, secular kind of church, uh, mm-hmm. like a non-denominational kind of church. Uh, and uh, I played drums with my dad. Um, I tried to play guitar at first, but my fingers were too small. So then I, uh, he got me a drum set and I played drums with him in church. And uh, I was just oh, always, cool. around, yeah, I was just always around musicians. And then eventually like fifth and sixth grade, uh, grew some and I could actually like play power chords and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, all from, uh, like very like classic rock and like, uh, secular worship music kind of, uh, introduction to, to music. And, uh, yeah, that kind of led me here. Sure. I've spoken to a lot of people that got their start in, in the church. I mean, it's, you already have like a built like an audience, right? You're playing in front of probably hundreds of people right away. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely like, uh you know i was on stage for sure. sure yeah it's not like you're your first you're not going out and playing to three people right. like you you at least have you know a large gathering i would assume of people there yeah yeah it was it was cool it's definitely a good like intro into live music for sure how old are you when you started playing drums oh shit i don't even know man i want to say like i could have been anywhere from eight to ten maybe i think Okay, so fairly young, really. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure before that, I was like, like, if we had like a family reunion, all my dad's brothers are musicians. So like, there would always be like gear and and everybody would jam and shit. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Do you have any siblings that play? Uh, I have an older sister, but she doesn't play any instruments. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was just kind of like my thing. You and your dad. That's rad. So you, you, you would jam together? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And my mom uh, can sing and she can play a little piano, but I was always around like, like my mom was always harmonizing to anything she would be listening to and, and same with my dad. So uh, yeah, it's just all I know, honestly. That's cool. That's cool. From the church band, did you eventually form like a band with friends or what yeah. was the next like project you yeah, had? Yeah. I was in like my first band band, which was like a cover band. Like we, you know, we would do like, like uh damn it by blink 182 oh, cool. <laughs> so i w- i did that in like sixth grade i think i was like 11 years old and okay. uh, yeah and like uh crazy enough like the drummer in that band in sixth grade is now the keyboard player in my band now really yeah so like i've been writing with i mean i've been with the same people for almost my entire life that's really cool that's yeah, that is really cool yeah um so you've been writing with him for this project currently no, I, I write everything by myself. Um, okay. So like the band is more like a kind of hired gun thing, especially cause like we just started doing the band this year. We haven't even played a show yet. Um, but like, we're taking all the songs and like, uh, fucking re re, uh, what's the word composing them kind right. of into like a full band setting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Rad. Okay. Well t- tell me how you got your start from there, from that cover band, obviously you started writing your own music and when did you start yeah, yeah. performing your own music in front of people? Yeah. So that was like sixth grade. And then from sixth grade to like eighth grade, we did the band thing. I probably wrote a few songs in that time. And then my freshman year, um, my, my drummer slash keyboard player, he moved away and he was like my real like musical friend. I had another friend named Zach HD though, who, he ended up like being in my bands in like eighth grade and then through high school. Okay. And, um, and then we linked with like some of my older sister's friends. So like we were freshmen and they were seniors, but we all like had the same music taste. Uh-huh. So we ended up forming a band with them and, uh, and, and uh, like we never recorded anything or anything like that, but uh, we, we had, we started writing like original songs. It was very like, early 2000s emo is like mm-hmm. totally my musical background for sure like and sure. and and then like late 90s pop punk and that kind of thing but uh so yeah so I, I got in a band with them and we would play shows and we I don't know we probably had like four originals and then uh after that after that freshman year it was they they all graduated high school so then it was kind of hard to to like have a real band so all through high school I was pretty much like battling having band members especially living in Ashland because mm-hmm. it's such a small town um and even to this day like I don't really know a lot of musicians like and and for me it was always like there was no other option really like uh, music was all I wanted to do and and a lot of the guys I would fuck with were like chasing girls or or partying and and i did that stuff too but music was always the number one thing so then i i kind of fell out with like having a band and shit and then um uh are you familiar are you familiar with american football Mm -hmm. yeah i love that band like all those early email bands yeah yeah so then I, i i somewhere along the line i discovered mike kinsella as owen after American football, because I'm sure they broke up like a year after I was born or something. But uh-huh. actually, actually, they put out a song recently. Did you know that? They like oh, yeah. break, got back together and put out a song. Yeah, yeah. They put out like two LPs in the past few years, I think. Oh, they have? I I <laughs> caught, I mean, I heard a song of their, or I remember seeing that they put a record out. This is a, like three or four years ago. I got you. Um, yeah. But, but so I didn't I, follow I, them further after that, apparently. <laughs> I found Mike Kinsella and he called him his acoustic project Owen. Okay. And, and for some reason I thought it was super cool that he just called it a name and it was Mm -hmm. just him playing guitar. And I had always been into like dashboard and stuff. So I was always like writing acoustic songs on a guitar. And then, so I was like, Oh, that's cool. And I was like an impressionable kid and I just copied him and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to call my shit an O name. And so that's where Oliver came from. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then, um, shit, what, where did I go after that? So I was still struggling to be in bands. And then I graduated high school and I formed a band. Um, 
that was kind of the same song and dance but like I stuck with it for a little longer um but it was kind of the same like fighting band members to stay in in the band Mm -hmm. um and like to show up to practice and shit like that so um I was doing that and and then that was probably like 2012 to 2014 I think okay Mm -hmm. and then 2015 um a girl I had been seeing off and on for like my entire like adolescence like through high school and stuff she was like Mm -hmm. my friend on and off um well shit let me back up some more even so I was in the band I was in Treebeard and and then I was making I was always making remixes on SoundCloud too oh okay I was taking like fucking uh like like a soldier boy acapella or some shit and putting it over like a, a, a video game, like a final fantasy. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And like flipping it and putting trap drums on it. And I was always kind of doing that in the background. And I kind of built up a little following on SoundCloud doing that. And like, that was really hot back then was like, like, and this was like 2014, I want to say 2013. Mm-hmm. And like, it was all like, uh, like Young Lean and like Bones and and those guys were starting to come up and this whole SoundCloud thing was happening. And all they all had their producers that they work with and all the producers were coming up on SoundCloud and so I kind of was fitting into that. But like I didn't have a face on it. There's no image to it. You know, it was very much like just for fun. Mm-hmm. And and I had always been super interested in rap music and I always kind of made rap music in the background as like this guilty pleasure thing. Mm-hmm. And, 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 uh, so the girl I was seeing at the time after that, she was, she liked my remixes and stuff and thought they were super cool. And then, uh, um, I had a rap song that I had uploaded and deleted like quite a few times. Cause like, I would like put it up and then I'd get high and I'd get like marijuana induced in anxiety. Oh yeah. Paranoid. <laughs> You're like, uh... what am I doing? This is embarrassing. Like I'm a broke ass white boy from the Midwest. I'm you know and but then she at some point was like that song is tight and and that uh went a long way with me because I really valued her opinion and so I was like okay well if she thinks it's tight maybe it is tight and then uh, it was like end of 2014 the band was falling apart again and I was like well she thinks it's tight so maybe I should really pursue this and I saw I saw like Bones and and Xavier Wolf and all these guys making like all these DIY rap videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of saw a place for myself in that because before then, when I was like deleting rap music, it was very much this rap music was very much like a a major label type thing, you know? Right. So, So like there wasn't really DIY rap. I mean, there was, there was always like three, six mafia and stuff, but those guys had, you know, they were popping um still so so there was there was no it, there was no like struggle rapper that was cool that you were mm-hmm. like oh he, he he doesn't really have all this money but it's cool right but then that kind of started happening so I saw a place for myself in that and uh yeah so then 2015 I just started pursuing Oliver Francis um and putting it out there as hard as I could and and I was seeing like Bones and like Lil B and all these dudes and um they, they, they put out a, a ton of content. Like they were like saturating the internet with this shit. Um, and, and that really inspired me. I was like, I was like, okay, so and I don't even know if I ever really sat down and thought about it, but this is what I was doing. I, I started making a song mm-hmm. with the intention to make it, to make a music video for it. So I would, I would, every month I was going to upload once a month on my YouTube mm-hmm. every month. I would, I would just, make a song, sit down on one song and get the song done and then go shoot a video. And I, I had a camera, um, that one of my bandmates had left with me, like kind of abandoned his camera with me. And so, um, I just gave it like to my friends at that point. I kind of took a lot of, I took a few of the friends that I really knew I could depend on, like Mm -hmm. my friend AJ and my friend Christ and my friend Zach gears, like, they, they were they weren't musicians but they were like you know we were tight as fuck I could count on them for anything sure so then 
I took those guys and I was like, okay, I'm going to put my friends in these videos. I'm going to have, I, I just hand the camera to AJ and I'd be like, I'm going to do a performance, try to keep it in focus, float it around a little bit. No idea what the fuck we were doing. Um, and so, yeah, so that I just did that. And, and I don't know, I, I think that a lot of people, it resonated with a lot of people think that they liked that we didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think that a lot of people could see themselves in it and see their friends in it. And they saw the camaraderie between me and my homies and, and yeah, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much from then to now. And then, and then. So those YouTube videos started work, obviously working. Is that what yeah. kind of drew your name? Okay. Yeah. N never like, uh, I've never had anything like blow up overnight. Like, right. like ever, like I've never, I've never like gone to bed and woke up and been like, Oh my God, it's got a million views. Oh my God, it's cracking. Like I've definitely had stuff that like went faster than other stuff, but everything I've done has been a very slow burn. But so it's, it's just weird. Like I never had like a, Holy shit, we're popping now. Right. Moment. But it's, I mean, for a career, wouldn't you probably want what you have yeah. as far as like, yes. I mean, you have a ton of streams and a ton of views, and it's to have it like organically grow is much better than waking up and being like, oh, I have 10 million plays. And then the next song you put out, like, you know, gets a thousand, <laughs> right? Yeah, without a doubt. So um, it's incredible, honestly, man. And, uh, yeah, so now now I'm here and it's like I bought a house off of music. Like I've been all over the world and that's and, so cool. Uh, it's surreal, man. It's crazy. And do you feel like due to the internet, it was you I mean, it must have been harder of thinking, like if you came from a small town to like be like, How am I gonna get yeah my name out to this massive world? But yeah. I mean, with the internet now it's everyone's kind of accessible in that sense. Yes, a little bit. But I mean, this internet's oversaturated, not saying that like, oh, it's easier, but yeah, yeah, it's harder you know now. I mean? But yeah, no, definitely. I uh, like going back to like seeing Bones and Lil B and all those guys and how they were saturating the internet. That was another thing I was like, I was like, I'm going to make it so when you Google Oliver Francis, you get me. No, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That was like right. part of the plan. It was like, because I feel like that's the thing a lot of kids do. They're like, oh, I want to rap. And it's like, this short-lived thing they make one song they make one video but like for me it was like you're gonna search oliver francis and you're gonna be able to watch me for a good hour like you'll be i wanted you to be able to go down a youtube hole of like my shit my videos my music mm -hmm. so um that played into it a lot i think that 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 hustle really worked for me and uh yeah and 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 now i'm here <laughs> yeah how did you stay like um like how did you persevere as far as like, okay, I'm going to put out all these videos. Like what was there like a moment that it kind of started to work in the sense of like, Oh, like this song kind of took off enough to where it was like a little victory or like a little milestone that you're like, okay, that gave me the, the little push to keep going. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like it wasn't for a while. Like the first, the first video that I had that really got cracking was a song called wavy. And uh, I feel like it did like, it got to like 300,000 views pretty quick, mm -hmm. like maybe a month or two months. And then, and like going back to how slow, like how it was a slow burn, like that was cracking. And then like, I'd be back and I don't know how many videos I made leading up to that, but, mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm going back to these old videos and they're like hitting a hundred thousand and they're hitting 200,000, you know? So it's, mm -hmm. it's like, at first it was like, oh, we got 3000 views. Like, you know, that's not crazy. But then that video that had 3000 views now a year later has 100,000 views or 200,000. Oh, because people are finding that one, like Wavy, for example, and then they're going yeah. back into your catalog and watching videos that they had yeah. never seen before. Yes, definitely. Because like going back to the saturation in the YouTube whole thing, it's like you find this and, and apparently that song, people like that song. And then like, OK, I'll go check out more shit from mm -hmm. this artist. And I had more i'd put in the time the time for, right yeah for them to have more shit to go back and check out yeah going back to like a viral moment right it's like if you had a viral moment overnight and you didn't have anything prior or maybe one song prior then people would have been like oh like we love this and then you're you they're either like you're trying to catch up to keep putting stuff out but it having that like bank of great material that people can just go oh and then i found this rad video from him and then this one and then this one right right yeah, yeah kind of digging back into your catalog yeah helped immensely for sure just just putting in the time and and making 
the content and and having fun doing it for sure mm -hmm. from from the six that like when the like from wavy for example like when did you get reached out to from like from a label like hopeless you're signed to hopeless which is probably a huge big moment for you i mean the bands that are on that roster if you're into the emo punk rock scene yeah. is like yeah i mean it's like top notch of all those bands yeah I mean, what were did they reach out to you pretty quickly or like when did that happen yeah i feel like it was like like around new year's 2016 or 2017 um i got i had never been on a plane before and i got flown to new york to meet with an a and r and that was that was the first time i got on a plane first time no i had been to new york one time on tour with a shitty band but um yeah so i i would say around new year's 20 wow 16 i think so you okay so you had toured prior to this project but just nothing in the just barely capacity. yeah I mean, capacity very, way, like, you know? very like crust punk basement type shows you know what i mean like that's like, rad though i'm sure you that was probably still a lot of fun oh yeah i cherish that for sure yeah wow right. what was it like going on a plane for the first time and then knowing where you're headed like you're i'm headed to new york to meet an a and r guy yeah like your dreams tough. are coming true yeah, it was fucking scary flying. I was like 23, had never been on a plane. <laughs> so I was like, this is insane. And then and also we're flying out of Missouri. So it was like this fucked up little, little, like two rows, just, just. Oh, like, like a small plane. little plane. Yeah, super small, super <laughs> fucking small plane. And. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I've been on one of those once and that was enough for me. Yeah. yeah and I've flown it, a million it, times. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Like, uh you know like what you were saying like i was going to like meet with a record label and like all this you know i, I shot a video in new york city and it was uh like a, a local dude shot the video and took us around new york and it was it was sick honestly it was like a kind of a movie moment a little bit sure wow yeah. and then you obviously signed with hopeless and What's mm -hmm. the first thing they do for you? Do you put an EP out or do they want to get you on the road, get you in front of people? Uh, no, I signed with them in the middle of the pandemic. And oh, you did? So you this was all prior to signing List Hopeless, this this trip to New York. Yeah, yeah. I okay, signed. sorry, I'm going ahead of myself. Oh, you're good. But I, I was independent till right when the pandemic happened. I didn't even have management till, I don't know, six months before the pandemic happened wow um, okay well tell me so you get to new york you get like wine and dine by the saying our guy or whatever they're taking you around and then what you just said nah i'm good uh no they uh the guy there was a super nice guy and he was like i just don't think this is the right move and honestly i was glad at the time i was like i wasn't like crushed or anything it wasn't a big deal but like looking back i'm glad that i didn't sign with them because it was a huge major and i probably would have just got shelved and like sure it would have the thing that happens with the majors is like they sign a kid who's got a big viral moment and he has a ton of trajectory but then he gets on the major and they they hold everything up like i know people who are in this situation they they hold everything up mm -hmm. so if i would have signed to a major it would have stifled my entire the entire blueprint that got me to that point, you know, the right. saturating and yeah, you wouldn't out. been able to oversaturate anymore because they're gonna be like, no, you're not posting anymore. We're exactly. gonna make sure we're gonna come up with a game plan for your exactly. songs. Exactly. And and in this day and age, uh I just that's not a great way, I think, to go about shit with the how accessible everything is. Like you can't nobody cares to, I mean, depending on who you are, but people don't care so much about a full length project. They don't care you know, you can't tour off the back of an album for two or three years. Like they just want, they want a new song. They want something new as often as possible. So looking back, I'm glad that that didn't, that didn't happen. Cause I think that, I mean, who, who knows, you know, I could have, it could have gone through the roof, but at the same time, I know a lot of people who signed with majors and they're in that situation where they had a big moment and they didn't follow it up quick enough. Um, and but, yeah, I mean, just, to, to your credit, man, I mean, it, it doesn't look like you needed it, right? I mean, yeah. if you, to get those many views and, and have the, the success you were having without that support, it's yeah. like, well, I'm, I feel like now it's interesting because of the internet. And I mean, once you kind of get on people's radar, it's like you almost don't need the, 
I mean, the funds I'm sure would be nice and the backing yeah. as far as the money goes and the yeah. distribution, but like you could kind of do it yourself if you, if you are at a million plays, it's like, okay, now, well, what are you going to do for me? Not right. like, what can you do? What? Or, yeah. It's like, you can almost flip the script on them a little yeah, bit. Definitely. Especially, <laughs> you know, it's, and like the same thing with like, I know people who like live in LA and they just, they don't need to like, uh, you know, like I live in Missouri and my rent is so fucking cheap. And I, I did all of this from Missouri. Like you just like, where, where are A&R's discovering people at shows? No, dude, they're swiping through TikTok now. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's where music is being discovered is right. Like, so just sit, just live somewhere where it's cheap and, and post TikTok. <laughs> like <laughs> honestly that, that's what i did like i just posted on youtube so uh, that's so funny so all the records you're making are right out of your house or you're right here right here no way yeah I, I mean i've done studio sessions i literally just was in la for two weeks doing studio sessions but uh yeah everything everything that i've put out so far i recorded in my bedrooms in shitty apartments and a shitty duplex and now here in my house so that's incredible yeah, that's just wow. All. With yeah. touring and stuff like early or pre-pandemic, was it hard to book tours or did you have a booking agent or tell me about getting on the road the first time? I got an agent luckily very early on. Um, okay. Like when I was, when I was, I want to say like 2016, 2017, an agent called me and, or emailed me. We got on the phone and they wanted to work together. And so, yeah, that, that happened pretty quickly. And then, um, I pretty, I never really did any support. Um, I pretty much always just did little small headliners. Mm -hmm. um, but it was dope. I had a great time because I got to bring artists that I fucked with and mm -hmm. and the shows were all like intimate and and we were touring in like a Sprinter, which was very, you oh, know. cool. It's like a, a better van. Right. It's the but, tall like Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have the Mercedes. I think we had a Ford, but uh <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was very dope. It was very like familiar a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it was cool. Yeah. Very early on, I got a booking agent. Thank God. Cause I know artists who are like on my level who never got a booking agent. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one thing that you'd want, right? Just because at least they could take over the scheduling the shows and the venues and all that yeah, yeah. And routing like, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And just like to get out there and tour, you know? Um, getting out there and touring is like one of the best things you can do as an artist is, is make a face-to-face -face connection with, with fans. So uh, yeah, that was dope. Very grateful that that happened. Well, how did that affect you in your career as far as COVID went? I mean, were you on the road when that happened? No, I was okay. at home. I was at home. I don't think I had any plans to tour even because I was, I was, yeah, I didn't have any plans to tour because I had, uh, I was working out, we were in like a bidding war with two labels oh okay hopeless said that they would sign me in and without buying my back catalog which was huge for me and i think says a lot about them because every other label i ever talked to was like we want to buy your back catalog or there's no deal so oh, so we want to own everything you've done up until this point right and they give you a big advance but i would rather have passive income and like the potential to right money off that so so that went a long way with me uh signing with them but no i wasn't going on tour i was just working out that and then i ended up signing with hopeless and then it was kind of like my management was like we don't need to fucking worry about tour we need to work on this lp or whatever we're gonna do with hopeless so then i was just like locked down writing and uh i started exercising really hard and honestly like being in missouri um lockdown was pretty chill like you know because everything is spread apart there's like you know it's not like los angeles or new york it's not you know right it's a little bit more space in between people yeah yes and and so um yeah i just took that time to write music and and i got in really good shape and i got healthy and uh i don't know i think i took advantage of it uh pretty well but also again like it was chill i can't like my managers are in LA and they're like the, the, all the protests were happening and, and COVID was happening. And they're like, dude, it's like the end of the world out here. Like, so it was pretty chill for me, honestly. 
Well, and it sounds like you're able to write this record that's coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, for over, sure. So that was all done over the course of this last year and a half? Yeah, it's funny because like I, I was working on that project, which, which was very like conceptual and very, um, it had a very distinct, it has a very distinct sound across the board. But then um, like just a few months ago, I'm in here, I got moved into here mm -hmm. and I, I made Friends, the song that just came out. And I was like, oh, fuck, this sounds very much like, I feel like it sounds very familiar to my past sounds and uh, very true to like Oliver Francis. And I think that fans will really like it. And so then I was like, I, that inspired, I, I kind of rediscovered a, a part of myself that, you know, I was, I was trying all this new experimental stuff, but then I kind of rediscovered my love for what I had done and like how to make it better. And so then I was like, okay, I need to run with this. So then I told Hopeless, I'm putting, I want to put the whole album on pause and I want to work on this sound. And they were chill about it. And then I, I wrote five songs um, kind of based on that single on Friends. And now we're putting out an EP that kind of mm -hmm. sounds like that before going back to the LP. Oh, wow. Okay. So you have a whole concept record that's already what in the works or. Yeah, it's pretty well finished, I think, honestly, but uh, who knows? I, 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 I don't really know. I'm very like, wish-washy and I changed my mind and shit. And <laughs> like, I'll be like, we like submit something to DSPs and I'm like, the mix is fucked up. And then everybody is like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, so then the, like friends and these, the new songs that have came out recently, they're going to be on your new EP, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which it's is called, called what? Ollie FM. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and we're rolling it all out in singles. Cause we want to kind of go back to what we were doing. Like, this way I have more time to, instead of making all the songs, sitting on them, not putting shit out. Mm -hmm. If we roll it all out in singles, it's like, okay, I can work on this one up to the release and then put it out. And I had time, to, you know, I can give each one individual like breathing space. Yeah. And just time to like work on it and build on it. Like rather mm -hmm. than being inactive and sit and sitting on it, like this song is done, but it's just sitting there because I'm working on the rest of the songs that accompany it. So we thought, well, let's just, put them all out and kind of go back to what we were doing and be more consistent and more frequent with dropping videos and songs and that kind of thing. So I think they should all be out in September and then awesome. I'll be, and then I'll be back focused on the LP. Cool. And then what about, so friends is recorded in that house you're sitting in right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just right What's here. It like to, I mean, so you recently went to a studio right now that you're talking about is yeah. Yeah. That, is, how much different is it working in the studio versus having your freedom in your house? It's way different, dude. Um, it's like, I just have like five years experience, like engineering myself. Uh huh. And then like everybody uses a different DAW. I use FL studio 10, which is some fucking prehistoric shit. <laughs> some Jurassic program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Then I get in a studio with a guy who uses Ableton and that's dope. Ableton sounds sick. I'm like, I always hear shit. And I'm like, damn, that sounds dope. But, but, uh, it's like, I can't like jump on the computer and like learn it or like fucking edit like oh, you know, right, right, right. near myself. And, and so like, it's, it's almost kind of like a barrier between me and the song a little bit. Cause I'm like, chop this, pull it back. No, this, no, that, you know? So, um, but it's cool too. It's, it's, it's just a learning curve for sure. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. I mean, you got to trust that there are people out there who are as good, if not better than you at mm -hmm. making music and they do it differently. So uh, with the studio sessions, I just try to take it with a grain of salt and try to have fun mm -hmm. and uh, not, not put too much pressure on the situation. Like, you know, just, just go in and make music with some other people and, and have a good time doing it, you know? Mm hmm with with these new songs or with this EP I guess it, this is all written over the course of the pandemic and it was just like you'd bang out a song in your room and then what send it over to them and kind of get that, an approval that, or put it out or yeah yeah the LP was over the course of the pandemic and then the EP I did like in the last like 3 months oh wow so this is super recent stuff yeah and essentially I like threw a wrench in like the label's entire plan and <laughs> and 
they were totally cool with it and they got it and they were like yeah we think this is a great idea for you to put it all out of singles and all that kind of stuff so it went well working with them is like a breeze it's not there's no pressure at all like they're they've never said no to anything that i've done they've just only you know tried to like uplift me and encourage me so that's cool that's yeah, cool yeah. And, and you were able to sign with them over was it strange signing to a, your first record label over what like zoom or something a little bit i actually i had eaten like an edible before i had eaten an edible and i was like fucking just ridiculous. out of it i yeah I was, laying, <laughs> I was laying in bed like having an out-of-body experience and my manager <laughs> my manager texts me and she's like uh the deal's done and i was like holy fuck uh, i don't know what i said i was probably like okay cool i, I didn't even sign it she signed it for me <laughs> You're like, I can't even do this. <laughs> yeah. so it was like, it was, I was like, okay, sick. And then she was like, do you want to sign it? And I was like, you could just do it for me. It was very like <laughs> underwhelming, <laughs> yeah, like incre incredibly underwhelming. And the next day I was like, dude, I was so high when you sent me that text. <laughs> but, uh, but hey, yeah. we're signed to a record label. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super underwhelming. I think that's how a lot of it is though nowadays. Like, uh, like I know people who sign deals and then they like faked their like signing it like a video for instagram oh sure you know what i mean like it's all fucking smoke and mirrors man <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah because you'll see some people that have like a cake and all this stuff throw a big yeah, party yeah. and it's like is this real or did you just like come up with this 15 minutes ago yeah it was nothing <laughs> like that it was, i was literally just like laying in bed yeah okay sign it let's do it that's cool yeah. well are you doing a big release for the ep or when it can when it becomes the EP after the five songs, are you gonna yeah, have anything yeah. planned? Yeah, exactly. We're gonna we're gonna have a party somewhere and I think the band will play. I'm not sure if I can give out the details. I'm not oh cool. I don't know why I couldn't, but who knows? Somebody will somebody will tell me I can't somewhere. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're gonna have a little event and we're gonna have a good time and celebrate the music for sure. Cool. What about touring? Is that on the horizon or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're trying to go to the UK uh, right after the new year. And then I know we have something booked in the fall domestic. And uh, yeah, so 2022 for sure. We're back on the road. That must be pretty exciting. I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the band and shit. Cause it's like, it's kind of nerve wracking a little bit. Cause before my show was very much like uh, I always brought like a, kind of like hardcore band energy to it you know very like crowd oriented like you mm -hmm. know we were just up there screaming and like the crowd is on stage and everybody's jumping off stage but now it's like we're actually like we have some musicianship and we're performing rather than doing like a insane karaoke thing <laughs> so uh yeah it's dope we're all super excited and it's all my homies who like 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 I said like like Nico my keyboard player he was my drummer in my band in sixth grade and and then trace my drummer now like i've known him we went to the same like preschool and kindergarten like we were you know in and out of each other's lives the whole way and he was always in his bands and i was always in my bands and we were never really in a band together but we should have been kind of thing and now we are and uh yeah it's it's super dope honestly can't wait it's gonna be it's going to be a ton of fun for sure. That's cool. Super exciting, man. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I have one more question before I let you go, though. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Advice for aspiring artists. Write as many songs as you can, first and foremost. Write as many songs as you can, because the second song you write is more than likely going to be better than the first song. Don't be too hard on yourself. So you're just starting out. You got to learn how to record yourself or some shit. You don't know. You don't know how the fuck to record yourself. Uh, so go in and, and don't worry about writing a hit song. Just go in and learn how to use use the DAW. You know what I mean? Learn learn how to record. Just take it with a grain of salt. Have fun with it. Right. But writing the songs is the most important part, I think. And put yourself out there. Don't let uh. Everybody's gonna have a shitty opinion, some shit to say. It's okay to, you know, get bummed out about that, but don't let it get the best of you. Um, don't, don't let it stop you. And just try to stay consistent and persistent and, and make as much music as you can and try to have fun doing it in the process for sure. Bring